Okay, big number coming. 259,000. That's how many gaming consoles were actually sold between March 16th and March 22nd. So it seems like one of the things that we're doing whilst being safer at home is getting into gaming. Now, of course, that's across the PS4, the Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch. But that's a lot of brand new gaming owners out there. So for all your PS4 owners who are brand new to the game, let me show you 20 plus tips and tricks and settings that you need to know to make your gaming experience even more awesome. Let's do this. Break it down now, phone, gadget. Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. Okay, let's start with the lovely, lovely background music and this little ting, ting, ting that we have going every time we move around the screen. It's amazing, it's incredible, but it gets old quickly too. So what we're going to do, going to up to the top, going to settings, scroll down until you see sound and screen. Click into that. And at the bottom, you're going to see two options, one called system music and one called key tone. What you want to do is untick both of them. So let's untick system music. Ah. Okay, now I, have, I actually like to keep the key tone one, but some people don't. But if you want to get rid of it, simply untick that one as well. On the navigation bar, you can obviously move around and look for your particular game that you want to play, or you can use the L1 or the R1 to simply jump all the way to the beginning or all the way to the end. Another little navigation tip right here is that if you just hit the PS4 button on your controller, it will just jump straight to the game or the application that you currently have active. So we know the PS4 is not just about gaming, but you can consume your Netflix and your other media through this as well. That also means that you fall asleep, well, at least I do, in front of my Netflix on my PS4. Don't worry, you can actually set a timeout on that as well. Go into settings, scroll all the way down until you see power save settings. And then you can see set timer until PS4 turns off. And it's divided into two. You have the media playback and then the general kind of games playback. Well, under media playback, I simply set it for two hours. I probably have fallen asleep. All right, let's move on to the controller, which is probably one of the key components of the PS4. And the idea here is to save as much battery life to get the most out of our controllers. So under settings, go down to devices, and then you're gonna see controllers right there. Click into that. So a couple of things. The first thing I do is I reduce the volume on the controller. There's no reason for it to be full blast. I also get rid of vibration. I mean, it's a nice little touch, but uh, I prefer to have a longer gameplay. And then I take the brightness and I bring it down to dim. Good enough to play, good enough to still be cool and saves battery. So let's just say you're in the middle of a game and now you realize that the volume is too loud or too soft. Press the PS4 button, go to the quick menu and here the volume control is right here. You can make it louder, you can make it softer. Now an interesting one that's here, it's set time until controller turns off. Uh, I'm not sure why you want to make that a 10 minutes, 30 minutes or 60 minutes. As long as I'm using it, don't switch it off. So I just leave it on. Do not turn off. Of course, the choice is yours. When you plug in your headphones to your controller, it exposes two more options. So the first option is the volume control, self-explanatory, louder, softer. But the other one, the output to headphones. Now you can say I want all the audio coming through to my headphones or only the chat when you play those online games. Right, we know the PlayStation 4 has two power off modes. One is completely off, and then the other one is in rest mode. Now, when it's in rest mode, you want it to charge your controllers. So to make sure that that's doable, go into settings, go into power, save settings, and then set features available in rest mode. Under the supply power to USB ports, you want to make sure it's either on three hours or always on, definitely not off. <laughs> Look at your controller on the top left hand side you have the share button when you click on it you can share video clips you can share screenshots so let's go into settings called the sharing and broadcast settings and here we want to change a couple of things the first we want to change it from standard to easy screenshots what's the difference the difference is when you press it once on the share button it's going to simply take a screenshot as opposed to going to the menu so if you want instant access you can do that then length of video clip 
there's no reason for it to be 60 minutes because you know it just takes up more space on your drive you can set it to five minutes three minutes whatever you feel is the most comfortable for you and then if you scroll further down under screenshot settings you want to change the option called the image format you want to change it from jpeg to png just a better resolution gives you a little bit more depth in your images okay, so we've taken screenshots we have taken some video clips let's go into the capture gallery let's just go into all it's just easier to see it and divide it so here i can divide it into the screenshots and then the video clips each in its own separate locations now if you go into any of these you can obviously see the kind of images that i've been capturing this one of the trophy images it does it automatically you can enable that or disable that click on the option button and you've got a couple of these options that come up as you do that the one we're interested in is the one that says set as background so as beautiful as the blue thing is lovely swish tick thing going on there um, I'm going to use one of my own screenshots. You can use the right controller to be able to move and make the image bigger and smaller, zoom more in until it fits your screen. So let me just move that around. Um, okay, once you got it where you want it to be, bearing in mind the navigation bar is there and then here's your beautiful screenshot. You can actually enable that, press the X to enter, let it save. And then you go down to the bottom to where it says, well, preview to see what it would look like and then click on apply. Okay, by capturing lots of screenshots and lots of little video clips is obviously going to eat into your space. So let me show you where you can see that. Go into settings, go down until you're going to see storage, and then we'll start to calculate and then click into it. And then you can see capture gallery applications, etc. And you can see how much space your gallery is actually taking. Now, if you want to delete some stuff in there or you want to move it to a USB drive, what you do is you go into your capture gallery click on the option button on your controller and it exposes these options. Click copy to USB storage or click on delete and then it's going to say to you what do you want to delete, select all and then there it goes. If you're the main person playing your PS4, there's no reason to log in every single time. So what you do is you go into settings, go into login settings and then tick the option to say login to PS4 automatically. It will straight away take you to your profile, saving you that step. But if you're worried about somebody messing with your profile, what you can actually do is log in passcode management and actually set a pin for your particular profile so your sibling doesn't mess with it too much. So the keyboard is easiest used when it's paired up with your PS4 app on your phone. You can simply use that to type. But if you don't want to do that on the controller, right stick, push it down once and that enables the motion sensor to be used. And essentially, once you calibrate it, wherever you point the sensor towards the PS4, that's where its little dot is going to be running around the screen. And you can use that as your clicker. A cool little hack is being able to switch on your TV the moment you switch on your PS4 without actually switching on the TV. The PS4 will do it for you. Now, your TV must have that facility to be able for this to work, obviously. So go into settings, go down into system, and then you'll see an option there called enable HDMI device link. Make sure you have a tick box in there. Now, when you switch on your PS4, your TV should also come on at the same time. Well, since we're on the screen anyway, go up to the top where it says automatically downloads. I like to untick these. I don't want anything automatically downloading in the middle of my game, in the middle of my battle, slowing things down. Some of them even need a restart. I just want to untick these options. Let me control when stuff gets downloaded. So my PS4 and my TV is set a little bit further away from where I'm actually playing. So sometimes I need a little bit of <clears throat> help to be able to see things on the screen or be able to read and know what's going on. So one thing I can do is go into system and accessibility and then click on displayed closed captions. So at least I can read what's happening, especially if the volume is off. Then the other thing to do is to go into the zoom. I like to enable the zoom option. So when you press the PS4 button and you press the square button, it will actually zoom in on the screen. So there we go. There's an example and I can navigate around the screen and read those sets of instructions. Press the circle and then it comes out of that mode and you go back to play. Now what is nice is being able to double tap on the PS4 button to take you to the previous screen that you were in. So almost like an alt tab on a Windows computer.
So enjoy your brand new gaming experience. Check out some of these other cool PS4 tips and tricks and Wi-Fi down here. Uh, hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in these videos. Let's go.